Hey everybody, my name is Chris Martin. Uh, thanks for watching. I should have really put this video out like two years ago, but uh, I'm happy to put it out now. It's still a very competitive market. So I get the question a lot and a lot of people are facing this struggle of not getting their offer accepted. Whether you're a buyer or an agent that's not able to get their buyer's offer accepted, hopefully this video can help you guys out, give you guys a few ideas on the next go around on how to get your offer accepted in a competitive market. So let's get right into it. Number one, here's the best way to get your offer accepted. You forcefully have the listing agent sign your offer by force. You can't do that, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. There's agents out there like, really? You can do that? No, you'll get arrested and you'll, you'll lose your license. So some people were really excited and wanted to hear more on that. So no, you can't forcefully sign, have the other agent sign your offer. But what you can do is you can, you can have a full offer ready to go. What I mean by a full offer is you want your paperwork to be ready to go with everything and everything that's needed. Your contract to purchase, your agency disclosure, your lead paint form, seller statement, first deposit, pre-approval or proof of funds. You want all that together ready to go for the listing agent. You also want to ask them the question of how they want their offer received. Do they want it in one PDF? Do they want it in separate attachments? Or do they want it sent through dot loop? You want to ask them to make it convenient for them so they know that you're entering into their court and going to make it as easy as possible for them during this transaction. You got it? Good. All right, number two, we wanna to talk to the agent. So that was talking to the agent, but we wanna make a point that we have to talk to the listing agent before we submit an offer. We wanna gather as much intel as possible, as much information we can before putting an offer together. That way we can utilize some of that information into the offer. So some questions to ask the agent when we do get them on the phone. We want to, if we don't know them, we want to let them know a little bit about ourselves. We want to let them know how easy we are to work with. If you're not easy to work with, then don't have that conversation, but hopefully you are. And let them know how easy we're, we are to work with and that we do everything we can to make the transaction as smooth as possible. We want to see how they want the offer received to them, but we also want to ask them um, some questions. Hopefully, if you can get to a price of where you need to be to get your offer accepted, bingo, that's exactly what you want. A lot of the times agents aren't willing to give that to you. If they are, then great, you've done your job, you can come back to your buyer, hey, this is where we need to be at to get our offer accepted, and you, you've won, you got a big win right there. Um, but if not, a lot of the times you can still get some useful information that can help you get your offer accepted. A great question to ask the listing agent if they don't give you a direct number is, how many offers do you have on the table? We want to find that out, right? We also want to find out, are there any offers above asking? So the asking price, maybe 500,000. Are there any offers above that? They may be willing to disclose that if they're not willing to give you a direct number. They may say something along the lines of, oh, it's really competitive, offers are really good. They can kind of, you can sort of put a number on some of the words that they use sometimes if you're experienced enough to do that, right? So the offers are strong or they're really good um, or they're really, really good. You can kind of gauge on where those offers are sometimes. So are there offers above asking? Great question to ask. How much above asking is a good follow-up question, right? To see if they can again give you that number that you're looking for. A lot of the times I may use my buyer's threshold as a benchmark to see where the offer is. So for instance, if, if the listing price is 450 and I know my buyers can really only go up to 500, maybe slightly higher, I may say that to the listing agent and say, hey look, my buyer's threshold is at that 500 mark. Are there offers above 500 already? And see what they say. They may say yes, they may say, say not yet. That can definitely help us in putting an offer together. Uh, because your buyer may say they're only approved up to 500, but if you come back with that information and say, hey, look, in order for us to get this, it looks like there's slightly above 500 as far as some offers. Is there any way that you can come to the table with more than 500 if that's something they're willing to do? Here's another great question to ask the listing agent. Is there anything we can do to have our offer stand apart for the other, from the other offers that are already on the table? And listen to what they have to say. Uh, closing date, we want to find out 
a closing date that's preferred by the seller to help them transition out of the property. If they're thinking about a closing date, that could be useful and help our offer stand apart from others. Anything else? So when I say anything else to help us stand apart, it could be simple things like leaving items behind. So if they have some items that they feel they don't want to move or that they just want to leave behind to make their move easier, that may be something you want to write into the contract to say the seller can leave A, B, and C items behind um, and that you'll sort of assume those items in the removal. Um, you also may want to allow the seller to stay at the property after the closing for a certain amount of time. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of times there's a use and occupancy agreement put together and you can have your attorneys draft that to where you can close on the property but let the seller, which is now a tenant, stay there for two, three days after the closing so they can look at that as a transitional period to actually get out of the house. Believe it or not, this could be super valuable for a seller and really relieve a lot of the stress on moving and they might even take that as wow, like this is gonna make my life a whole lot easier. I'm willing to, without a doubt, deal with this offer and forget about everyone else's. Or they may take your offer, even if it's less, because of the ease of the transaction. So a use and occupancy agreement may be something you wanna throw out there to see if that can kind of separate yourself and get you locked in. Uh, inspection, so this is something that I, sort of, you need to have this conversation. If you're an agent, you need to have this conversation with your buyers and see what their comfort level is. If you're a buyer, you need to know what your comfort level is and have that discussion with your agent. Hopefully your agent's asking these questions or at least a portion of them uh, to help you get an offer because if they're just asking you what you want to submit an offer for and sending it in, uh, that's not much value, right? So. The question you should be asking yourself is, do you absolutely 100% want an inspection? I always think it's a good idea to have one, especially if you're a first time home buyer. But if you're an experienced buyer, maybe you have some experience in the construction field and you feel like you have a good handle on the house and the major components, you may want to waive your home inspection altogether. Uh, you also may want to do a home inspection, but do it for informational purposes only. You have to be careful with this as well because you want to make sure that you're okay assuming that you're moving forward if something major comes up. If you're not okay, you may want to add some additional language on there, like for informational purposes, however, buyer or buyers reserve the right to remove themselves from the contract if repairs exceed over a certain amount. So again, I'm not advising you to necessarily waive your inspection altogether. It's just something to think about and know who you are as a person to see where your comfort level is. All right, so we're finding out uh, closing date, any special items that we can put in there uh, to kind of ease the, the, the move for the seller. Um, you'll be surprised um, that, um, you know, how many agents aren't having this discussion, that if you do have this discussion, it'll put you at a huge advantage when it comes down to multiple offer situations. All right, so we've heard about love letters before, at least a lot of you have. That's another um, technique or another um, strategy that you could throw in there that it's a letter basically from the buyers directly to the sellers. It usually consists of, it's not like a true love letter like back in high school when you fold up a little envelope and pass it to someone. This is more of a, a letter to the sellers just um, showing some appreciation for them considering your offer, maybe giving them a few compliments about their home uh, and them giving you, uh, you giving them a little insight to who you are as a person and a little bit about your background. We don't want it to be a full three page novel and you don't want to write poems and haikus in there. You kind of want to keep it simple, concise, just to give them a little bit of a glimpse to who you are. The goal and the idea of this is to submit your offer and to have a little bit of personality and emotion connected to it so you're not just a piece of paper. Uh, there are times where an owner will sort of fall in love, love letter, with the buyer to say, wow, this, is, this sounds like me when I bought the house. I really want to uh, give these people a chance at getting it. So it's something you may want to consider putting into your offer and uh, directing that directly um, or addressing that directly to the sellers. All right, so we have a bunch of different ideas here. 
I want to hear if you are in a multiple offer situation coming up. This is a perfect video. You're watching it at the right time. Apply some of these techniques if you weren't thinking about doing it already. I want to hear about it. Um, hopefully you don't fall flat and some of them are successful for you. But if you do find success in any of this, definitely let me know. I'd love to hear about it. Uh, good luck for the rest of the year. I'm hoping that you guys can uh, pull yourself through and separate yourself in those multiple offer situations and get some offers accepted. All right, I'll see you guys soon.